Hi guys! Thank you all for tuning in and welcome back to Sewing Clara. In this video I will show you how you can make your own bias tape. I will show you one way of how to make it with these little helpers here and then another way how to make your bias tape without any tools. So let's jump right into this. First let's talk about what is actually a bias tape. So I'm gonna simplify it for you. A bias tape is a really long strip of fabric on which the long edges have been folded on each side towards the center and these tapes have been also ironed so that they would keep its shape and they can be used in order to hem different edges. Bias tapes come in different versions so I have here two bias tapes made of cotton they have been also treated with spray starch so they feel super stiff and it makes it also easier to work with them. And then I have here this shiny bias tape that's 100% polyester, it feels like satin. And these two are stretchy bias tapes made of viscose jersey with a little bit of spandex and they are great for any pieces where you want your edge to stretch out a little bit. All these bias tapes have been store-bought Normally you can get them in many colors, but sometimes there are situations where you don't find anything that would match your piece and in that case it's really great if you are able to make your own bias tape and I will show you how. One way of making a bias tape or also called bias binding is to use forms like these that I have here. So I bought all the sizes that there were so that you can see what they look like. I have here size 6, 12, 18, 25 and 50 which refers to the width of the bias shape when the edges have been folded towards the center and it's in millimeters. So when I have here the cotton bias shape that I bought in the store that's size 20 because when I grab my guide and measure it it's two centimeters wide which is 20 millimeters and if I would edge my piece and I would fold it in the middle then the finished width would be only the half which is something you have to keep in mind when you consider what size uh, of the bias shape binding form you want to buy. They all come with this helpful pamphlet that says how big or how wide the strips of fabrics that you're going to use with them are supposed to be. So for example for the size 25 it says I should have a strip of fabric that's wide 48 millimeters. The pamphlet also shows how to stitch together strips of fabric when you want to create much longer bias shape than what the length of your fabric originally was. So you're not supposed to stitch them together straight or sew them together straight but we'll come to that later. And there's also a little graphic that shows how to use these forms, how to pull the strip of fabric through and what to do and we're gonna do it together. But I will also show you how you can create your bias shape without any tools. I do think that if you want to have a really thin bias shape, size 6 or 12, these are really handy and if that's something you want to have I would invest in one of these. For the size 18 you don't necessarily need this form, it can be made manually without any tools and for the size 25 and 50 I don't find it necessary to have one of these. So let me show you how it works. All right, so I have here this wide strip of fabric with Christmas pattern on it. That is the width, that's 96 millimeters, that I would normally use for this large form. And that is really easy to make yourself. So I'm going to grab the strip of fabric, I'm going to fold it in the middle. I will make sure that I align the edges nicely and then I'll grab my iron and I will press it shortly. And now I have a nice clear fold in the center. So it's really easy to recognize how far am I supposed to fold these edges. So I will start with the bottom edge and I will very carefully iron the bottom edge towards the center. Mm -hmm. 
I made sure that I was far enough with the iron from my fingers so that I couldn't hurt myself. And now, as you can see, I turned the work around and I'll iron the other edge in place. And here is it. You just created your bias shape size 50. And if you want to, you can also fold it like so and iron it in place. And then you are basically ready to use it for your project. Next, I have here a strip of fabric for the size 25. That's basically the half of this size. So when I place it on the finished bias tape, it's actually exactly the width that we have here. So I will do the same. I will fold the bias tape in the middle and I will press it first. And then I will wait shortly till the fabric cools off a little bit because it's really hot. And I will open it and I will fold both edges in place. I will hold them and go over with the iron like so and iron the first section. At this point I turned off the steam because since I'm moving quite close to my fingers I don't want to burn myself with the steam which would be very painful. And now I'll keep folding both edges towards the center. I always iron one section, hold shortly, then I'll let go, wait a little bit till the fabric cools off so that I can touch it. And then I will continue doing it until I finish the entire strip of fabric. And that is it. I just created the next one. So if I wanted to iron it also when it's folded in the middle, then that would be the width. And I find with the size 25, it's really easy to make the tape manually. The next size, that would be the size 18, can be already a little bit tricky because it's obviously narrower. So that's the size where you could draw the line and say, okay, for this size, I already want to have the bias tape form. You could still try doing it manually. So you would do the same. You would fold it in the middle. And then once the fabric cooled off, you would fold both edges in place and iron them towards the center. Be very careful when you do it like this. Always keep a nice distance from the iron. And once you move to this part of creating the bias tape, definitely turn off the steam. Otherwise you could burn yourself. I find it helpful spraying it a little bit with water or even better with spray starch because then the bias tape will keep its form nicer and it's just easier to work it, especially since that is something you should do without steam. So see, I created this one as well without the form. But again, if that is already too narrow for you, go ahead and maybe get yourself one of these tools. And now let me show you how to use these. For the size 18, I'm supposed to have a strip of fabric that's 36 millimeters wide. So I have here this old sleeve of an old denim jacket. So I'll make a line here on this side and then I will measure 36 millimeters at several places. And then I will simply connect these marks. And now I can cut my strip. I also went ahead and measured um, the width for two more strips. And now I want these three strips to be stitched together so that I would have one long bias tape once I'm done. So in order to do that and in order to stitch them together the correct way, I had to cut 
the ends at 45 degrees angle. So you see that I cut one end upwards and one end downwards. And here is how you stitch and pin them together first. So this one is facing right side up. I will grab this piece and turn it so that the right side is facing down. So I see the wrong side and I place it like so over the edge. So you can see that now I have here these little triangles visible, but they won't bother me. We can chop them off later. And um, I made a line so that you can see where I'm going to be stitching. And for now, I'll put a pin along this line. And when I fold the strip to the right side, you can clearly see that this creates a nice continuous line. So we'll do it again. So I take this one, turn it to the wrong side, position it at an angle over the end, and I will put a pin in it. And I, when I fold it, it again creates a nice line. So now I have to stitch these places together. And the reason why you want to have a stitch at an angle is that if you would simply stitch together two straight lines and you would then fold the bias tape, you, you would have so many layers of fabric and it would be really difficult to sew or stitch on your work. And this way you kind of divided the layers at an angle and it is just much nicer to work with. So I'm going to put the pin in at an angle because it's easier to stitch. I double threaded my needle. I'm using a black polyester yarn and I'm simply going to do the back stitch here. You could also do simply the running stitch, but I just want to be sure that this thing is going to stay in place, hence the back stitch. And because this is a thick fabric, I will go on and stitch the seam to one side simply with a running stitch because I want to be sure that when I move it through the bias tape form that it would not get caught inside of the form. And now I can cut off this little triangle that was sticking out and you have a nice line. So if you want to stitch the seam to one side, make sure that you stitch it to the same side on each section. Uh, because that will make it easier to move through the form. So that means that since I folded here the seam to the right side, I'm here at the next section, I'm also going to fold the seam to the right side and I'm also going to stitch it in place with simply running stitch. Now I will grab my bias tape form. I will turn it over like so and I will open this little handle and I like holding it this way so that the narrower side, the little beak as I like calling it, is facing towards my right and so that I have the wide section on the left side. And since I am making this bias tape of multiple sections, now is the time to make sure towards which side the folds are facing. And since I'm gonna be pulling the bias tape from left to the right, I want the fold to be facing the opposite direction, so to the left. Because if I would have it this way and I would try pull the tape through the form, this edge could get caught and I would get stuck and we don't want that. So now that I made sure that the fold is facing into the opposite direction, I can start pulling the tape through. So the best thing to do it is to grab your needle and to stitch through the center of the end that will go in first couple of times. Keep the needle in and slide it through the bias tape form. And now grab the end of the bias tape and carefully place it in and make sure that it's nicely centered and start pulling it through. Take your time and you will see it will come out nicely folded.
Now, depending on the fabric, some fabrics tend to open immediately again. In that case, the best thing to do is to put in a pin at an angle and pull it out a little bit, maybe put in two or three pins. And once you put in a couple of pins, you can go and grab your iron and you can press it, but make sure you do not press over the plastic heads of the pins. And then wait a little bit until the fabric and the pins cool off. Then you can pull them out. Always be safe. And then you can continue. This fabric has a lot of cotton in it, so it kind of likes keeping the shape. So I can go on and simply iron over whatever comes out immediately, which saves me some time. Now we came to the section where we have the seam. I have to pull in on it a little bit harder but it will go through at the end. See, a little bit of force necessary because it's denim. If you will use a thinner fabric, it will be of course easier. This is not necessarily the ideal material, but we managed to do it as well. So now that the bias tape is formed, I will go over with steam again because I like to iron it once more so that it will really nicely keep the shape and that's easier with the steam. A fabric like this cotton fabric that we used for the widest bias tape would have been much nicer to work with when stitched from multiple sections, like put together from multiple sections. I did have to use some force in order to pull the denim strip through, but I managed at the end. Only now when I would use it, I would have to be very careful when I would be sewing it in place because even though through the angle the thickness is divided, it's still quite a lot of fabric here that I would have to stitch through. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So whenever you're thinking about what material you want to use for your bias tape, I do recommend rather something a little bit thinner because it's going to be easier unless of course you need only a small section and you don't have to stitch the tape from multiple sections then it won't matter that much but in this case it's not necessarily the most practical solution to be honest so the way i have used the form in size 18 is exactly the same way you would use all the other sizes so there is nothing else i can show you with these you have seen the procedure. It's actually quite simple. Just please be always careful with the iron. It's very hot and be careful with the steam. Whenever you're moving closer to your fingers, I do recommend turning the steam off. And one more thing, when you look at this fabric, this is a cotton fabric and I would try to stretch it out a little bit. The fabric wouldn't move at all. It would keep its shape nicely. If you would grab the fabric at 45 degrees angle, see, you can stretch it out a little bit. And that's why you normally cut your strips for the bias tapes at 45 degrees across the fabric, because that way they will stretch out a tiny little bit and you will be able to work also around curved edges. The way I made this bias shape, it won't stretch out at all. So that's great for any project where I want to make sure that the bias tape will keep its shape and where I don't want it to stretch out. But if that were for something that's slightly curved, it would have been much better if I cut across the fabric at 45 degrees angles, because then also the bias tape would be just a little bit stretchy. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well before you cut your fabric. Regardless of whether you're using a store-bought bias tape or if you're using one that you made yourself, it is still a great tool. It's really great for hemming and depending on the material that you will use, it can also set a nice additional effect to your piece. For example, I have here this cute tissue hoodie and I used a checked fabric for the hem on the other side and it looks super cute. If you're interested, the 
tutorial for these tissue cases is also a part of this course so you can go ahead and watch it and that is it for today i hope that you guys found this tutorial useful and that you enjoyed watching it thank you all for tuning in and happy sewing mm -hmm.